call up uh, Mark Ito. For those of you who don't know, this is uh, Mark Ito. And uh, he uh, has graciously uh, applied and has been accepted to become the new executive director of the Osteopathic Medical Board of California. And as a special uh, situation, we'd like to call up uh, the executive director of the uh, Department of Consumer Affairs, Dean Graffalo. Grifilo. I'm Italian. I want to change it. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I will give the microphone over to Dean, and uh, he'll proceed. I think you've seen this before, Mark, but uh, make sure we do it properly. You're going to raise your right hand and then just repeat after me. I state your name. Do solemnly swear. I, Mark Ito, solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend, and defend the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And to the Constitution of the State of California. And to the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without mental reservation. Without mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I will well and faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Upon which I'm about to enter. Upon which I'm about to enter. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> They're going to take some pictures. Photo op. Photo op. All right. Oh, I need a chair to stand. It'll make you look good. Here we go. One, three. One, two, and three. Do you want to bring your wife up? Bring your family up. Bring your family up. Yeah, family. Family, come on up. This is a special day for uh, Mark's family. I'm missing one. I do have a son. He's not here today. He has an obligation. You have Photoshop, don't you? Yeah, do. Okay. <laughs> All right. Here we go, guys. I'll get you right here. And this is the official one on three, two, one. And it's my perfect view. Thank you. Yay. On behalf of the Board of Directors, we warmly welcome Mark to the... Oh, okay. Oh, just the two of them or the three of us? All right. I don't take it personally. The passing of the torch. Thanks. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Next, I'd like to call up Gore Adamyan. Is that correct? The lights are blinking in my eyes. So Gore is our newest uh, public member to the Osteopathic Medical Board of uh, California. And it's my uh, pleasure that I will do the oath with uh, Gore. I, state your name. I, Gore Damien. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution. That I will support, uh, defend and support the Constitution of the United States. And the, of the of and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies, foreign, domestic, foreign, domestic. and that I will, I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California, 
that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties and faithfully upon which I'm about to enter. Congratulations. Pardon me? Oh, picture. Pictures at an exhibition. I think that's a good idea. Okay. Chair declares the meeting in, in uh, session. I'd uh, like to take a roll call. Uh, Macheco, are you ready to call? Do we have a quorum yet? Yes. We have a quorum. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we will uh, see if there's any public comments uh, that are not on the agenda. Thank you very much. Um, regarding introduction of a new board member, we've uh, uh, prior to the meeting, we had a swearing-in ceremony, uh, which included our new executive director, Mark Ito, and we also uh, swore in our public board member, Gore uh, Damien. Damien, thank you. Our next order of business. Yes. Next order of business is a presentation by DCA. Thank you, President Zamuto, Osteopathic Board of California, for allowing me um, to celebrate uh, the career of Ms. Angie Burton. Before I do, next, but before I share my prepared remarks, um, exercise some personal privilege really quick, and let me first uh, welcome some osteopathic students here from A.T. Still Osteo Osteopathic Medical School. Um, welcome. Um, as a former staff, staffer for the California Medical Association um, that staffed the medical student se section there, I'm always fond of uh, folks like yourselves who are, are going to be busy in not only medical school, but obviously, um, you know, shaping lives and taking care of lives. So um, if, if there's anything that we can continue to do towards uh, your education and obviously your profession, I uh, look forward to doing that uh, hand in hand. So welcome again. Specific to Aunt Ms. Burton, congratulations on your, again, uh, very, very well, very, very well deserved uh, retirement. Um, in the near two years that I have been on board at DCA, um, selfishly I haven't been able to work directly with you enough in my view. And quite frankly, I think that's a compliment 
um, of you and your board and how well you manage it, because as you very well know, um, if in fact we had maybe uh, worked closely, that probably means that we're trying to address some kind of emergency or something like that. <laughs> so um, if there's any indication of how well and great you did your job, it was because uh, our interactions, again, were uh, unfortunately limited in my view. Um, and many times throughout the near two years I have been on board, uh, you demonstrated uh, the willingness to go on above beyond uh, your you know, formal role and responsibilities. Point in fact, I know we were chatting uh, before uh, the proceedings today where last week we had, uh, I did a budget briefing uh, with folks on the phone and uh, there was a very important substantive question that you had and my point being that uh, literally the second to last week of uh, your role here, you were still asking the appropriate and effective questions. And I will share with others um, what I shared with you that while you are, while you are formally retiring, um, I have become familiar with what is called a retired, retired annuitant <laughs> role. And um, please be not, you will not be surprised if in fact we're trying to, we will solicit you in that role. That being said, want to make sure that you're going to be able to start enjoying your retirement as well. And I would be remiss in not also mentioning uh, another great example of you going above and beyond was how you have been able to um, literally share your love, compassion for this work um, with your daughter, Rebecca Mitchell. Uh, she is obviously um, an executive officer in one of the other boards. And if there's any indication of... Um, yeah, how much uh, someone's love of the work, uh, love of the advancing the mission, is how you share it with uh, family. And you have obviously done that with Rebecca, so thank you. I will now turn over to my formal remarks. And let me preface it by saying, um, you know, in the short near two years I've been on board, maybe there's been a um, higher percentage of retirements than maybe... Um, you know, maybe over the last 10 years. Uh, at first, maybe I thought, is, is it me? Are people retired because I'm on board? I think it's more of a function of uh, literally demographics and, uh, again, time well spent here. And so, um, as mentioned, I want to make sure my remarks are more of a celebration um, as opposed to closing the chapter. Um, and so in that vein, we try to keep these formal remarks uh, light, uh, but to the point. And... Um, I'll just proceed. Angie, congratulations again on your retirement as the Executive Officer of the Osteopathic Medical Board of California. Although news of your departure has, called, has caused several concerning symptoms at TCA, including increased blood pressure from the high bar of excellent, excellence you have set, maybe some gastro reflex disease, otherwise known as heartburn, from the invaluable institutional knowledge you are taking with you and the most acute symptom of all, an extreme sense of gratitude for your service with the state of California. You are leaving us after more than 30 <coughs> years with the department, an extraordinary record of public service. Those three, those three decades have been diagnosed with steadfast leadership, a commitment to excellence, and an unwavering integrity. Your staff agrees that, the, that it isn't a benign di diagnosis either. They attest to your compassion, your creativity, your humor and enthusiasm. Angie, thank you for all that you've accomplished with the board. Your holistic leadership has helped license one of the fastest growing healthcare professions in the nation while upholding the highest standard of care for consumers and patients. While we do our best to suture the gap you're leaving behind, it is my honor to present you with this resolution as a small token of our appreciation as you check out for the outpatient care of retirement a symbol of our gratitude for all that you've accomplished on behalf of California physicians and patients. And uh, let me just quickly read the resolution. California Department of Consumer Affairs honoring Angie Burton on her retirement, whereas Angie Burton has served the state of California for 31 years, and whereas Angie Burton began her service in public service in 1987 as an office assistant with the Department of Consumer Affairs, and has most recently served as executive officer with the Osteopathic Medical Board of California. And whereas Angie Burton has earned the trust, respect, and friendship of all who have worked with her, now 
Therefore, be it resolved that Director Dean Argrafilo, by the token of this resolution, and on behalf of the State of California, congratulates Angie Burton on the occasion of her retirement, commends her outstanding record of service, and extends best wishes for success and fulfillment in all her endeavors, and be it further resolved that, that, a, suitability, that a suitably prepared copy of this resolution be presented to Angie Burton, subscribed this 17th day of, of January 2019. Again, congratulations. Thank you, Angie. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, come on up, Angie. You can stand in front of me. That's okay. No problem. No, no, really. I don't, I don't want to be in the picture. So on behalf of the Board of Directors, I'll give some comments. I'll let you sit down for this one. Angie, 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 we're going to miss you, you know? The continuity that you brought to this board has been exemplary. Your dedication to the profession has been exemplary. Your leadership has been exemplary. You're, you're the board's dream executive director. Mark, you got big shoes to follow. <laughs> but you've always been, you, you, as an executive director, you've been an advocate of the profession. You've been an advocate of the people in the state of California. You've been an advocate for what we do here is to protect the public. You, you've always worked for, for those goals and your uh, un, undying, selfless, uh, work that you've given all these years uh, is, is something that we will look on and you will look on as achieving the uh, ultimate goals of a profession. Uh, of course you'll be missed, uh, but of course we know that you've come to a time in your life uh, where retirement is well deserved, well earned, and we want you to enjoy each and every day with the utmost of best of health and best of enjoyment so that you and your family can reap the, the fortunes of uh, the wondrous lives that you've touched, the people that have come forward, that you've made a difference, and the people that you've influenced, uh, I think will be forever grateful. Thank you so much. Okay, back on the agenda. Next we'll do uh, election of officers. Question legal? Okay, may I have a nomination for the president? I nominate Joseph Zamudo. The name of Joseph Zamudo is brought forward uh, for office of uh, president. Are there any others? Seeing none, we'll uh, go for a roll call vote. I'll second it. Dr. Zamuto, would you accept that? Will I? Let's, we can't have you involuntarily serving. <laughs> it, would be, it would be an honor and a pleasure to serve okay. as president again of this esteemed organization. Great. Roll call? Yes. 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 Thank you very much. Our next office is uh, Office of Vice President. And I'd like to put forward the name of Cheryl Williams as Vice President. Is there a second? Second. Well, I have to ask Cheryl if she'll accept. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I learned something in that transition. Uh, yeah, I know. Roll call. Yes. Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Our next is uh, Secretary Treasurer. And uh, since uh, our esteemed uh, Secretary Treasurer is not here, I will nominate him because he's got more work to do. And he's willing to serve. So I have to place forward uh, Dr. Cyrus Buhari. Dr. Cyrus Buhari. Yeah, Buhari, yes. I second. Yes, he will. Mm -hmm. to <laughs> no. um, roll call, please. Dr. Yes. 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 Okay, thank you. Next order of business is President's report. Um, most of my important words were said in my message to Angie. Uh, my travel plans uh, this next weekend coming up, I will be traveling to Las Vegas to uh, participate in the American Association of Osteopathic Examiners. And this is a representation, for the students, this is a representation of the osteopathic medical boards in the United States. And at this meeting, uh, we conduct uh, uh, business which uh, deals with the commonality and concerns uh, of the boards. And we elect officers, and uh, we have representatives from that who also serve with the Federation of State Medical Boards. Um, I look forward to that meeting. And uh, I'll report uh, that at uh, future meetings. Thank you. We have nothing else. Uh, next is review and approval of minutes. Uh, we have September 27th, 2018, which was a board meeting. We have October 15th, 2018, which is a teleconference. And we have December 13th, 2018, which was a board meeting. Um, I'd like to take these uh, uh, together unless anyone would like to take uh, any of these out uh, to discuss separately. Okay. Um, so I'd like to have a, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, approve these minutes in block. Is there a second? Seconded. Okay. Uh, roll call vote, please. Yes. 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 Do we uh, know where uh, Ms. Mercado is? Um, we can proceed without her. She just won't be participating in closed session for the first hearing. Okay. So at this time, I would like to uh, uh, set up for the petition for reinstatement of license of John uh, Wojcik, DO, license number 20A6934, court reporter. Okay, that's fine. Uh, let's uh, then ask for a petition of early termination of probation Da uh, David Oringer, DO, license number 20A15139. Court reporter, are you uh, ready? Judge, you'll sit up here. What? Here. <laughs> I am going to turn the meeting over to our judge. Yeah, you're fine. I'm just going to get 
just need her to be able to hear. <coughs> oh, okay. Sure. So you want to be easier, please? <coughs> We're going to go, we'll take a 10 minute break as we uh, go ahead and set up here and people can take a biologic for fluid replacement if necessary. No, and I will have our presiding judge uh, introduce herself, and she will continue with the meeting procedure. Thank you. Um, my name is Erin Koch Gidman, and I'm an administrative law judge with the Office of Administrative Hearings. I've been assigned here to preside over two matters this morning. Um, I will do introductions uh, to ensure that we have a quorum, um, and I'd like to start from right to left, if I could please just announce yourself for the record. Public board member, Claudia Mercado. Andrew Moreno. Joseph Zamudo D.O. Gora Damien. Cheryl Williams. Elizabeth Jensen D.O. Very good. Thank you so much. Um, let's begin with our first matter. Uh, we are before the Osteopathic Medical Board of California. Uh, our first matter is in the case of the termination of probation of David Oranger D.O., the agency case number is 900-2016-000159, and the Office of Administrative Hearings case number is 2018-110-831. Um, I was remiss not to indicate that we do, in fact, have a quorum today. Uh, and for final introductions, if we could have everyone at the table, Mr. Gashet, I'll start with you. Good morning, Your Honor. John Gatchett, G-A-T-S-C-H-E-T, -E appearing on behalf of the Attorney General's Office. All right. And next to you? Yes. Jonathan Turner, and I'm counsel for the petitioner, Dr. David Oranger. All right. Very good. Thank you. And you have next to you Mr. Oranger. That's correct. He's All to right. my right. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Um, I assume, uh, Mr. Turner, that you'll be asking Mr. Oranger some questions. Is that fair to say? Yes. All right. Mr. Oranger, would you please raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under penalty of perjury? Yes. All right. Very good. We're going to do a few perfunctory, uh, more formal things first, and then that way we don't forget that you have been sworn in. Um, why don't we begin, Mr. Gashett, with you, and you can give us a reminder. I believe all of the board members, including myself, have the uh, smaller binder before us for the petition for the reduction of penalty uh, for David Oranger, D.O. Yes, and, and if the court would like, would you like me to go ahead and start entering the exhibits? Yes, please. Okay, very good. Um, in the binder, Exhibit 1 is the decision and order in this matter with a copy of the accusation. Um, a brief review of the accusation would reveal that uh, Dr. Oranger's license was placed on probation after the Arizona uh, Medical Board took action against his license. Uh, those details are listed uh, of what Arizona did uh, at page 13 and carrying through to page uh, 14. Arizona placed his license on probation pursuant to a consent decree um, and, and then California's Osteopathic Medical Board then took action and also brought discipline and entered into a stipulation placing his license on probation here in California. Um, the, the indication at, in the uh, accusation or the, sorry, the statement of issues when he applied for licensure, and I, I, I back up, it was a statement of issues, not an accusation, um, but was that he had had uh, issues with prescribing uh, in Arizona, um, poor record keeping, um, and then also poor uh, monitoring of the patients on controlled substances. Okay, um, exhibit two 
is the draft notice of hearing. Um, and obviously, Dr. Oranger is here, so he has notice of the hearing today. Exhibit 3 is the certificate of licensure setting forth when Dr. Oranger was granted a license and the fact that his license is currently on probation. Exhibit 4 is his petition for early termination of probation. I've taken the liberty of redacting out any personal information that would be contained in that document. Uh, exhibit 5 is his narrative statement setting forth um, uh, basically his petition and request today for early termination of his California probation. Exhibit 6 are letters of support that Dr. Oranger has provided as part of his petition, and those are from a Dr. Kerry Manugian, a Dr. Kathy Lee, and a Dr. Michael Couch. Mr. Gatchett, why don't you spell the first doctor's name for us, please? The spelling on Manugian is M-A-N-O-O-G-I-N, first name Kerry, C-A-R-Y. Thank you. The second doctor uh, is Dr. Lee, spelled L-E, first name Kathy, K-A-T-H-Y. The third letter is from Dr. Couch, C-O-U-C-H, first name Michael. And then the fourth letter is from a Dr. Kirkpatrick, K-I-R-P-A-T-R-I-C-K, first name Jeffrey. Exhibit 7 contains uh, his continuing medical education credits that he's performed uh, over the last few years and records of the hours completed. Exhibit 8 are the quarterly records of compliance from the beginning of his probation. I believe those go through until July of 2018. Um, we also have provided to the board members and uh, to your honor, Exhibit 12, which will be slotted in at the back, which is actually the most recent compliance uh, report dated January 9, 2019. Um, we're missing a few between July 2018 and January of 2019, but my understanding is, is Dr. Oranger has remained in full compliance with his terms of probation, um, and, I, and I would re represent that to the board today. Uh, we have Exhibit 9, which is the curriculum vitae of his practice monitor, and that is Dr. Manugian, M-A-N-O-O-G-I-A-N. Exhibit 10 is notification from the Arizona Board of Osteopathic Medicine that uh, his probation in Arizona had been completed and closed, um, and that he had completed the terms and conditions that Arizona had initially placed his Arizona license on. A large portion of the reason for his petition today is that he is finding that insurance contracts, for example, Blue Shield of California, will not give him insurance privileges while he's on probation. Exhibit 11 is a copy of the letter from Blue Shield of California showing that they will not grant him insurance privileges while his osteopathic medical board license in California remains on probation. And so that's Exhibit 11. And then we've already covered Exhibit 12. Those are the exhibits that we have, 1 through 12. I'd ask those all be marked for identification, and I'd ask those all be admitted. All right, Mr. Turner, any objection to Exhibits 1 through 12? No. All right, 1 through 12 are moved and admitted into evidence. Mr. Gashad, anything else? No, Your Honor, thank you. Mr. Turner, would you like to make an opening statement on behalf of your client? Um, I, I prefer just to get right to questions, if I could. Fair enough. All right. Uh, Dr. Oranger, uh, can you tell the board a little bit about the process you went through to get off of your Arizona probation? Okay, so, you know, in addition to the stipulated, uh, or the, the stipulations that Arizona placed on my probation, including education, monitoring, um, and uh, reporting everything back to the board, um, I had to go before the board again for an interview process this summer um, and face questioning by the board members um, and prior to them uh, agreeing that all terms have been satisfied. Okay. And uh, 
what work have you, been, if you could tell us a little bit about the work you've been doing since your placement on probation, starting with the Arizona probation in 2013? Uh, the work ordered by the board? Or? The actual employ oh, your employment, your employment, okay. I should say. Um, it was very difficult in Arizona to, to find employment um, as a physician with the probation, uh, but uh, most, most of what I did was uh, independent contract work and urgent care um, until I finally was able to get a full-time position again in 2016 um, with, a, with a company in urgent care and occupational medicine. So I had uh, more sporadic um, jobs that I had to fill up all over the state um, with commutes of hundreds of miles um, to, uh, to continue to practice medicine. And uh, who employed you in 2016? That was uh, Concentra. And what was your uh, job title with Concentra? Staff physician. Okay. And what were your duties? Uh, and, it, and it continues to this day. So it's uh, um, clinical duties in uh, urgent care and occupational medicine. Um, some minimal administrative roles, uh, but, uh, but largely it's um, just as a clinical physician. And has your work at Concentra included uh, practice in California? It has. Uh, as part of my contract agreement with them, I asked for a uh, time to practice in California at least once monthly in order to move forward with the terms of probation here. Uh, since the uh, events that led to your original placement on probation in Arizona, uh, I think the events were around 2010, 2011. Have you been accused of any workplace misconduct or unprofessionalism? No, there's there's never been a complaint, to my knowledge, um, uh, from any patient or uh, other employee. And have you received any feedback from colleagues or supervisors while at Concentra? I have um, the uh, the four letters that are... Um, that are in the binder are all from uh, Concentra supervising physicians, uh, center medical directors, and uh, regional, dis uh, I think they're called director of medical operations, both for Southern California and for Arizona. And can you tell us a little bit about some of the relevant continuing education and uh, training uh, that you've done since your placement on probation to address the issues back that occurred back in 2010, 2011? Yes, I think uh, the, the first step I did was um, I undertook a, a program in public health and uh, earned a master's of public health um, to further my education, especially for the field of occupational medicine. Um, in addition to uh, going through an uh, a physician re-education program through CPEP in Colorado. Um, I did a monitoring program through them as well, which uh, included monthly chart reviews and uh, discussion about how to improve documentation. Um, I took three prescribed courses, or three uh, um, ordered courses by the Board of Arizona, uh, on, which was my suggestion. But I've also undertaken uh, a lot more relevant to my field of practice, and that included um, an annual conference in Tucson, Arizona, the Southwestern Medical Conference, uh, for 25 to 30 hours, as well as conferences in emergency medicine and uh, other relevant topics. Um, two of the other courses I did that, um, ordered by the State of California included the, uh, the pain medicine program um, as well as a medical records keeping course. And I took a second medical record keeping, so I did one with UC Irvine at the onset of the California probation, and then I completed the program at PACE this past summer just to ensure that I've got a handle on record keeping. And uh, what changes, if any, have you employed in your practice, again, since the issues back in 2010, 2011? I, th I think first and foremost, I've slowed down and uh, really applied uh, 
evidence-based medicine to my treatment of patients, but I've also increased my documentation, um, throwing in relative, relevant sources, um, demonstrating you know, the rationale behind my clinical treatment of patients. Um, I've also stopped prescribing any controlled substances, and I haven't for the past probably about three years, um, and have relied on other treatment modalities for, uh, for conditions um, suggesting the use of them. And, and you can, can you talk a little bit more specifically about changes in your practice in terms of pain management? Yes, yeah, so, you know, so in, in, in my practice, uh, mostly uh, the musculoskeletal uh, disorders or acute injury, which may call, call for some pain management. Um, generally, I've, I've switched to all NSAIDs, whether oral or topical. Um, their use, um, as an example, Celebrex has an acute pain indication. If that's contraindicated by a patient's medical profile, I might uh, add a, you know, a topical medication instead. Um, physical therapy has been key, as well as re uh, referral to physical medicine or rehab specialists um, to address the root cause of the problem. And uh, why do you want uh, to get off of probation uh, with the California board at this time? Well, as, as you know, it's, it's been my dream to move to California for a number of years, and uh, it's been very difficult to, uh, to obtain a job um, because of the probation. So. A lot of times with that, without delving into reasons for probation in California, job offers have been rescinded as um, out of fear that I can't get credentialed with uh, insurance or, or other reasons. And uh, what are your future goals regarding uh, osteopathic medicine? Um, you know, I, I, uh, I'm looking forward to kind of expanding my practice um, using knowledge I've gained, going more in depth into occupational medicine, maybe taking on some more administrative roles, um, but just to keep the practice uh, fresh and new and exciting and uh, intellectually stimulating to me, just ever expanding um, my background knowledge while, uh, while practicing still. And how can you... Uh assure this, this board uh, that you're remaining on probation for another, I guess it would be about 10 months or so, uh, is, is not necessary? I think, um, you know, with the, with the amount of time I've served on probation and the work I've done to, it, to achieve, uh, you know, to improve my clinical practice, um, which continues, I, I, I don't know that uh, continued um, formal oversight is necessarily um, required for my uh, good practice. So, I, so I think um, you know. I think I've, I've reached. I hope the board sees that I've reached the point where uh, you know I continue to practice good medicine carefully with good documentation. I have no further questions. Mr. Gashet, any questions? Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, so, Doctor, I, I want to go back. Um, to Arizona and, and why your license was placed on probation. If you could tell us in your own words, um, why was your license placed on probation in Arizona? Um, I, I think, uh, you know, the, they did a record review um, after a, a complaint from a, um, a terminated employee, and uh, um, they found quite a few deficiencies in my record keeping. Um, and, uh, and I think initially I, I did not handle that complaint very well either. And so there was concern that, you know, I wasn't following guidelines for, um, for safe medical practice and documentation of it. Um, and I think that initiated the whole, um, the, the, the probation. Can you describe what was your practice in Arizona in 2010-2011? I, I uh, was running an urgent care center uh, at that time in Tucson. And so at that time that you were running that urgent care, were you prescribing controlled substances? I, I was, yes. And 
and in your own words, aside from the complaint, what were you doing wrong about prescribing controlled substances at that time? Um, I think it just um, pr probably prescribing too many of them at a time. Um, a lot of the patients that, that seem to have acute exacerbation of chronic pain issues, I would re refer them to uh, pain specialists, and the pain specialist referred them back to me saying, we agree this patient has a, has a pain problem. Um, we recommend you treat him in the following way. So rather than allowing the pain specialist on his own to do that, I, I helped uh, by uh, contributing to, to that medication. You're aware that we've had some uh, more learning and changes here in terms of uh, reviewing the standard of care since 2010 to 2011, that, that the scrutiny now on controlled substance prescribing is even heightened beyond what it was in 2010, 2011. Absolutely. Okay. What is the status of your DEA permit? Do you still have it? I do. I have a DEA permit in Arizona and one in California. You said that you haven't prescribed for the last three years. If you're placed off probation, would you go back to prescribing controlled substances? No, I've had uh, very good success um, with uh, patient treatment without using controlled substance, so I, I so see no need to revert to that. Are you familiar with current cures requirements here in California? I am. And, and what are those as of October of this year, or last year? Uh, well, that you have to check the profile of the patients prior to prescribing. Um, and generally, I, you know, even though I haven't prescribed narcotics or any other controlled substance, I still check it to see, uh, you know, what, what might behind a, be behind a patient's reason for seeking care. So you're using it even proactively without actually prescribing to learn what's going on with that patient? Absolutely. Quite often I document, you know, the, the prescription monitoring program a database was uh, consulted prior to seeing the patient. And are you familiar with the Medical Board of California's guidelines that they issued in November of 2014 on pain management? I don't know that I am. Would you promise me after, you're, after you leave here today that you're going to go ahead and get online and I print those out and read those? Absolutely. I, <coughs> I, I may have read them, but I, I can't pull them. What's a morphine equivalent dose? Uh, that's that's a unit dose that um, you know so, someone someone has who's on pain medicine. It's it's um, has sort of equated to a, a, a quantitative number, saying this is how much he takes in a given period of time. Would you say it's a tool to be able to compare different opiates and opioids about the potency and, and be able to determine? that they're not overtaking a certain medication? That's uh, a more eloquent way to put it, <laughs> yes. Um, you've talked about the coursework that you've performed. You've done a number of record-keeping courses. You've done a prescribing course. Um, it sounds like you've done some practice monitoring where they've reviewed uh, clinical care. Um, anything else that you've done uh, that could explain to the board today about why you'd be safe to practice off probation? Um, I think, uh, well, you know, the, um, I think I've been practicing well enough to have, um, you know, positive feedback from, uh, from supervising physicians as well as colleagues. Um, I'm in demand in Arizona um, for helping with, with some smaller private clinics. Um, and uh, so I think, um, you know, and, and with positive feedback from patients themselves, I, I think that demonstrates that I've been um, doing a, a job well enough to uh, to have the restrictions removed at this point. You, have the restriction removed. Have, have the restriction removed. <coughs> yeah. At this point. In your words, generally, what have you learned? I, I mean, this is a large process. You, your license it it was on probation in Arizona for approximately five years. It's been on probation here in California. Uh, just generally, what have you learned about yourself, about how you're going to go forward and be a better physician? You know, I, I think um, one of the biggest lessons is, uh, you know, you, you, is, is what I said at the beginning. You slow down and, and recognize what you're doing. Um, the, uh, 
um, you know, that is a privilege to treat patients in the state of California, and I, and I appreciate that. Um, that each, each patient and each patient's record deserves, you know, it's a significant amount of time um, not only to apply the uh, evidence-based medicine, um, but to record it as such also. And uh, um, I think I've become a, a lot more careful in my treatments with, with various, uh, uh, my decisions with various treatments and uh, my overall plan for each patient's individual care. In your, own, in your own words, what caused the underlying issues that led to you being disciplined? You know, it, it might have been just, um, just, just not taking the time, you know, just uh, forgetting the reasons we go into medicine and, uh, um, and not being as careful as I should have been, especially with documentation and record keeping. I have no further questions. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Very good. Let's, uh, questions from the board. I'll go right to left. Ms. Mercado. Sure. Of course. Is that plug okay for you? Um, yeah, I think so. If not, we have that other one. No, I'm good now. Okay. Thanks. Sure. All right. So we'll take questions from the board at this time. I'll start from right to left. Ms. Mercado, do you have any questions? for? Yes. Uh, Thanks for joining us this morning. Um, can you tell some of the students here in our audience uh, your biggest takeaway and how they could prevent something like this happening in their career? Yeah, and I, I, think, that's, I think that's very important, especially for students. Just, uh, just remember to be vigilant in, uh, in record keeping. Keep in mind that we are here for our patients. Um, they're, they're why we got into medicine and, uh, and apply the knowledge that you have while also um, um, sort of figuring out the problem for each patient and, uh, you know, to show all your work as well. I think, I think that's very important. And also, how, how from can your you, person... Can you move the microphone yeah. a little closer to you? <clears throat> um, on a personal level, how, how severe do you think this incident is from a 1 to 10 in terms of what you could have done to potentially, you know, harm somebody? Yeah, I don't, you know, it's, it's, um, that's a good question. I don't, I don't know that I had harmed a patient. Um, potentially, I, I don't know. Um, um, again, I, I'm, I ha none of this stemmed from a patient complaint. Um, but uh, you know, I, as much as you, you think you're being careful, I suppose there's always the the chance that that a patient could have been harmed. Um, but I, I don't know that I can put a number on that. Do you see yourself as a role model now for other physicians? I would hope so, yes, um, especially with, with the detail I put into my uh, documentation. And if we were to take you off probation, what message do you think the board will send to other physicians if we take you off probation 10 months early? Um, I think that the board sends the message that, you know, we understand that you've done your due diligence in, um, in going back to your training, going back to your education, and you know, for lack of a better word, rehabilitation in your vocation, um, and and we see the uh, the positive uh, from this, and uh, we, um, we're giving you a chance. All right, thank you, Mr. Moreno. Any questions? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Hi, good morning. Um, I was reading the packet, and I know you mentioned this earlier in your in your testimony. Um, but I'm referring to, let's see what tab is this, tab one, so, um, page four of the um, statement of issues. It's near the back. But um, basic, basically it kind of lists different incidents of where the Arizona board found that there was inappropriate prescribing of medication. And there's a list of several different incidents. Um, and I know that you were describing early in your testimony about how that came to be, but I need you to explain that to me again so I have a better understanding of how that occurred. You referenced a pain specialist. Can you describe to me again what was occurring? I'm going to stop you for just one second just so we identify for the record. Um, Mr. Moreno is on AGO 013. Thank you, Your Honor. Go ahead. Uh, you know, I, um, the, the board took a number of, of charts and 
I don't remember how they, I think they were randomly selected per day, and uh, they, they reviewed um, each of these records, um, and um, I, I, I honestly don't, don't remember start to finish how they came to, these, to this conclusion, but you know, I think documentation could have been a lot better, um, and uh, inclusion in the charts of uh, you know, letters from the, cons the consultant physicians uh, should have been there as well. Um, uh, so, um, so me, I, I, I don't know if that answers your question. But. Um, not specifically, so let me ask uh, in this way. Um, would you agree in the factual findings of the Arizona board that you were in fact inappropriately prescribing medication? Do you agree with that finding? Um, I, I did sign off on their order um, saying I agreed with it. Okay. Um, separate from that, there was also noted in the packet that you then applied for a license in Indiana, but then failed to disclose whatever was occurring in Arizona. So I'm wondering if you can help me understand that. Yes. Yeah, so I, I originally had a license in Indiana um, prior to having a, a license in Arizona. Um, and that's that's because I was in the military, um, and generally speaking, active military physicians will get a license in any state, and the majority pick Indiana because it's cost less, you know. And so, um, so my my we were I, I applied to to renew it. Um, at the time in Indiana, the renewal form asks only is your license. Um, it asked, uh, is your license currently in trouble or is there a sanction against your license? Right. At the time, there was no question that said, is your license uh, being investigated? And my attorney recommended that I say, well, if you're, your license is being investigated, but it's not sanctioned at this time. We took the matter before the Indiana board, and in the end, uh, the, um, the board overturned, or the, uh, the administrative uh, judge overturned the board's um, findings and um, and they accepted my uh, turning in them their license. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the, that's been since fixed in the database, as far as I know, with the national practice and PDB, as well as the Federation of State Medical Boards. But uh, okay. Uh, Was that documentation? Is that in our packet? Where the Indiana, the Indiana, the ALJ's finding from Indiana? Uh, you know, when we initially applied for a license in California, I mentioned that Indiana shouldn't even come up, but um, I was unaware that they had reported anything okay. to the database. So, um, Just so I'm clear, though, it's your, what you're stating is that that issue is no longer an issue and that they overruled the board, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, the, the letters of recommendations that you included, did the individuals who wrote them wrote that, were they aware of what was occurring with the boards? Yes. Like the disciplinary actions? Each one does. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the continuing education classes that you referenced, were those taken voluntarily or those just because you were on probation in order to take them? No, no, no. Uh, th there, there, were, there were three classes that uh, Arizona ordered, um, CME classes. Okay. Uh, initially, and I, I took them within the first uh, six months or something like that. Um, all the other, all the other ones I, I've done. Um, there, one, one course was ordered by California, which was a medical record keeping class. I voluntarily took the second medical record keeping class this past summer to to show how serious I am about this. Okay, and, and just lastly, if this board were to reinstate your license in full, um, what would you say to to us to give us? What I'm looking for is some um, semblance of what maybe has changed in, in your life? What has, what has led you to believe that you will now practice medicine in a different, safer manner? Um, and, and how over-prescribing may not be always be beneficial to your patients? How do you kind of put all that together? And Yeah, and I, um, as I mentioned, I haven't prescribed even a, you know, a week's worth of, uh, of controlled substances. Um, and, and it's not based on the probation because, uh, for example, California did not take away that ability from me, um, but rather requ required me to keep a log. Um, okay. 
but I, I think my practice has turned away from that and looking for other treatment modalities. I, I can't imagine changing that at this point. Um, you know, since 2011, when this started, um, it's been eight years of, of not uh, prescribing in this manner and uh, um, continuing to find other ways to help my patients without it. Okay. I, I just have to ask one more because you mentioned it. What was the, why, why did you decide to stop prescribing medication? The controlled substances? Yes. Um, the more I learned about it, the more I personally felt that it was not... Uh, was not helpful to patients. Mm -hmm. And then at the time, and since that time, seeing the literature about how potentially detrimental it can be uh, pretty much solidified my view on that medicine. Okay, thank you. All right, Dr. Zamudo, do you have questions? Yes, I do, thank you. Welcome, Dr. Oringer. And uh, I know that it's been five years of uh, dedication for the Arizona's board. And uh, we, uh, here in California, wanted to make sure that you were safe for California. Uh, well, a few questions. When you were practicing at the time where you weren't taking the time for patients, how many patients on average would you say you were seeing a day? Uh, probably four to five an hour. So, you know, in a, in, it depended on the shift. So an eight-hour shift, um, 40 to 50 uh, patients in urgent care settings. And how many patients a day do you currently see? I was probably about half that now. Um, although, it, you know, it depends where I work. Again, if I do an independent contract shift, and I, and I do that quite often, it can be up to four to five an hour again. Um, as far as the place of location, I think I saw that you were at LAX. Yes. And uh, let's see, in Arizona... Was it in Phoenix Airport? Where I work currently. In, I work currently in Tucson. Tucson Airport. And, and is, is this an airport clinic for employees, or is this an airport clinic for travelers? Do, do you mean uh, LAX? Yeah. LAX is for anybody. So they, Concentra has specific contracts with, um, with different employers. Uh, they see a number of the airline industry but we also see travelers and then any, anyone else who, uh, who, who needs urgent care is welcome to come. And um, at this point, what percent of patients would be workers' compensation versus travelers? Uh, that's, that's, that's a good question, too. Um, I think in, in L.A. specifically or anywhere. Either in, place. In, in L.A., it's probably about... 60% workers comp, 40% uh, walk-in patients. It's, it's not at the airport, it's walking distance from the airport. Of the patients that you treat, uh, how many patients uh, uh, have insurance that you cannot treat? That I don't know. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't I don't participate in the check-in process. Okay. Of the patients that uh, you haven't been able to see, uh, is it only at the uh, uh, walk-in clinics that uh, it's been affected, or is it that's at the hospital? The, oh, that's at the, the airport. I'm working. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so I don't know. Um, I don't know other than I've had offers rescinded because of. Uh, when the credentialing process started, they said, oh, we can't, you can't get it. So if you had a, a free, unrestricted uh, license, what type of employment might you be able to achieve? I'm, I'm hoping for similar employment. Um, I, I think they might be, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know how they do the billing, but, um, you know, I'm hoping it opens the, uh, opens the floor to other possibilities, other clinics. Um, you know, I, I've, I've been applying all over the state, and some of the uh, some of the clinics say we just can't because of the probation. Or we've been advised by our legal team to wait until the probation's over. Now, if you receive an unrestricted license in California, will you continue to travel between California and uh, Arizona for practice? I think at that point I'll, I'll focus on moving to California and uh, 
just starting over here. And what type of support system do you have here in California? I have family um, in Southern California and close friends. Is, okay. that, is that what you mean? Yeah. Yeah. No further questions. Very good. Mr. Damien, do you have questions? No. All right. Ms. Williams? I'm going to pass. Okay. Dr. Jensen? You've spoken a lot about time being an issue and taking time for patients. Do you feel that the resources that have been alluded to in all of your training, including the CURES database, including uh, training on pain management, et cetera, and other modalities for treatment other than uh, controlled substances, do you feel that you are, that those were, you were aware of those before and just not documenting and not taking the time, or are those brand new to you? I, th I think a combination of the two. Okay. No other questions. All right, very good. Uh, any final comments, uh, Mr. Gashett, on behalf of the state of California? No, Your Honor, thank you. All right, Mr. Turner, any final thoughts? Um, I just wanted to have one thing. I know there was a question about, you know, uh, why should Dr. Oranger be taken off of probation and, you know, maybe implying that, you know, that everybody should get off of probation early. But um, I think it's important to point out he's really gone above and beyond um, what was required of him, both by Arizona and California. And uh, his continuing education hours, I know, are way above what was required. Um, and then also, these are just some examples. Uh, he did the UC Irvine program he talked about, or course, but he also did then the PACE course, which was not required. He did that on his own accord. So I think he showed that, or I think the, the lesson is, if you go above and beyond what's required of you, as he has, um, that, that certainly uh, early termination is warranted. And, you know, again, He's served uh, you know, the vast bulk of his probation. And, and then also, just lastly, to clarify why uh, you know, he wants to come to California, I know that, uh, and, and move here with his family. Um, he has a wife and, and child. Um, and uh, you know, so far, he's working just periodically at the LAX clinic but he would like to find a, a permanent position in California. That's been his dream for some time now. Very good. Thank you very much. Um, with that, uh, we will close the, um, the matter uh, for Dr. Oranger. All right, so why don't we take a, a very brief recess so we can set up for our next matter.